Mega Man Zero 2 brought in a wave of quality of life improvements, as well as tweaks and fixes to the combat from the first game. While Zero 3 came in with more refinement and polish to the combo system and X skills, Zero 2 planted that seed for that refinement to come into fruition. You'll understand what I meant by the end of this video, so kick back as I guide you through the form system, which was crafted in an attempt to diversify the gameplay. This guide will address each form, their strengths, weaknesses, special effects, and how they cater to different playstyles. I'll also go over optimization and viabilities for these forms as well, and determine which ones are among the best and most practical. While Zero 2's combat system lacks the depth of Zero 3's, or free from the game breaking exploit Zero 1 was plagued with, the implementation of these forms contributes to how you make the most out of the tools you do have. A solid disclaimer before we get started. I will be listing how to obtain these forms via on-screen text, but this is not a walkthrough. If you find the methods to obtain these forms difficult, consult game facts for a walkthrough or unlockables guide. This video's focus is to explain the forms in depth, so you can know how to approach the game with them. And seriously, it amazes me how it seems like that website doesn't exist anymore when folks ask how to unlock something. It quite literally takes a couple of seconds to search the game and a walkthrough guides you on how to obtain these forms or anything else you need to unlock. These stars don't really tell you much and can be quite deceitful. It doesn't help that the vast majority of resources on the internet are just straight up inaccurate in how they explain what these mean. Rockman Perfect Memories is the most accurate resource on forms. Don't trust anything else. Probably about the only thing that I wouldn't encourage anyone to go to GameFAQs for. The power rank is simply representing what the form's offensive prowess is. Just because a form has 4 stars does not mean that the damage output is ridiculously high, like the wiki page suggests. It's usually just showing that the form's damage boosts slightly exceed base forms, but that doesn't automatically mean that it's a form best for damage overall. The defense rank is self-explanatory, though also a wee bit misunderstood. Other than defense form itself, any other forms with more than 2 stars in defense does not mean that they reduce damage. That indicates that they have other properties that contribute to protecting yourself, not directly buffing your resilience. However, 1 star defense is exactly what it means. That form just sucks at keeping you alive if you're not that good at dodging. The speed rank is massively misunderstood. While active form does increase your walking speed, any other forms that have high speed does not always mean that they make zero move or dash faster. They signify special properties, just like defense does. The strategy wiki page claims that power form slows you down to sluggish speeds, but that's just flat out wrong. There's a tiny, tiny movement difference, but it's not noticeable. The speed rank mainly indicates how much your triple slash has been either buffed or nerfed. Another thing to note, unrelated to star ranks, is that Charge Z-Saber, Shield Boomerang, Shot Reflect, and all X skills negate form bonuses, which honestly sucks, but moving on. Energy Form's gimmick is that it's easier to obtain life energy from enemies you failed. This in turn makes it so you are more likely to keep yourself alive with a reckless playstyle during stages. It's good for newcomers wanting to enjoy the game with a healthy drop rate of life energy, though you'll find that the drop rate isn't ridiculously higher either. RNG can still screw you over when you're in desperate need for health. When it comes to offense, that's where things begin to fall apart for this form. You see, for some idiotic reason, they decided it was a good idea to alter how the triple slash orders itself for this form. The second slash for the regular triple slash combo can be done twice. Then the third slash is the first slash of the regular triple slash? Like, what? Not only is this weird, but it's ridiculously slow. Hence why the speed rank for this form is one star. I wouldn't recommend using this form at all if you're good enough at the game. It's not one of the worst to suffer through, but you have to be heavily reliant on the X skills, plus the charge chain rod to deal fast consistent combo damage. Technically, the extra damage of the last hit of its triple slash brings it up to base form's regular damage output, but ooh, that terrible attacking speed makes it unreliable to stay mobile in boss fights. I can only assume that the three stars in power represent the minor damage boost in buster damage, which plus one damage does not register on bosses due to them taking half damage and the increased damage to the last Saber Slash, but eh, it's not an accurate representation of what this form's all about. It's no stronger than base form. X form is basically what it implies. You're more or less taking yourself out of Zero's playstyle and swapping over to a more long range X style gameplay. You can still utilize things like Charge Slash, Rod, Boomerang, but clearly the Buster's buffs are the main draw to this form. 
Four shots on the screen at once doesn't really make much of a big deal, but considering you get a flat plus two damage with every buster attack, minus X skills, spamming lemons and level one charge shots make this a pretty brain dead form to traverse most stages without getting too close to an enemy. And since dashing with lemon shots give you an extra point in damage, that makes it slightly more busted. The lack of any triple slash game kills it, though that's expected for a form that wants you to play like X. When it comes to boss battles, this is still one of the less optimal forms to be in for quicker kills. Like energy form, you're relying on X skills as form ignore damage, plus chain rod for maximum damage. Sure, technically it's easier to just spam from a distance, but not only is that boring, this is a zero game after all, not Mega Man X, but your ability to speed kill in this game is already severely limited on the combo options to begin with, which is practically non-existent for X form. Still, if you want to play Mega Man X and Mega Man Zero, don't let me stop you. Play however you like. Defense form is what I truly say would be somewhat of a beginner friendly form. You can take half damage from all attacks and you're impervious to knockback. Not much more to explain other than that. It's the form's only redeeming quality. That said, it's quite literally the worst form to be in for boss battles on normal mode. As a trade-off for your beefy body, the saber damage is effectively cut in half, and yet another case of a form that needs charge attacks and X skills to perform well with bossing. Hell, even with the reduced damage outside of boss battles can be quite the dilemma to work around. For starters, weak enemies that normally take a single hit to kill will require two. You'll basically be forced to use reversals on damn near everything. That buff the shield boomerang's damage doesn't do jack for it either. It hurts that most X skills in Zero Two aren't even all that great to begin with, so you, if you're good at the game, I wouldn't recommend this form unless you're performing some kind of self-imposed challenge. It's physically the weakest form in the game. You can think of a race form as... X form? but. Minus the buster buffs and add shot eraser to your saber. That's literally it. No grounded saber potential. The main gimmick is that you can be more mobile while having a more defense base of offense and stages. Shield Boomerang's job is shot erasing and reflecting, but this at least allows you to erase without needing to work around the boomerang's reduced movement options, effectively giving you another option to keep up your pace and stages. Still, this form does more harm than good. There's no real immediate need to erase shots in this game, outside situational moments like protecting CL at the intermission. If you're good at dodging, you don't need to erase shots. Simple as that. That, and you're putting yourself in more unnecessary danger by erasing up close. Other than that, it has the same performance as X form in boss battles, except slightly worse because of the lack of buster buffs. I personally see no merit in shot erase over the nerfs it suffers as a trade-off. Ah, active form. Immediate advantage it has is its increased movement speed and activates rolling slashes. While the grounded rolling slash sucks and it's mainly just there to show off if you know when and how to use it, aerial rolling is a monster in stages however. Combining them with walking and dash slashes can turn sturdy enemies into scraps in a mere second or two. It's a great form to be in if you're accustomed to speed running the stages. But as much as I love to swagger with rolling slashes, Let's put my bias aside. This form is ass for boss battles. I'm not going to be a broken record with why it falls short in combo damage, because the single slash restriction it has speaks for itself. Outside of that, rolling slashes can't even be integrated into combos, so its gimmick is straight up useless for bossing. The downstab X skill also disables grounded rolling, so the advantages and disadvantages of this form really goes hand in hand. I'd recommend this form only to players who know what they're doing. Yeah, uh, don't let power form deceive you. Trust me, it's probably one of the most misunderstood forms, and I truly do not blame anyone for it. No, it does not give you high brute strength like the strategy wiki suggests. In fact, that power ranking just flat out doesn't apply to bosses at all. But before I get into why it's just bad, let me talk about its positives. The many damage boost it gives to every weapon does make a considerable difference, especially if you don't want to rely on charge attacks to speed up your gameplay. The Z Saber's plus 2 damage is what really stands out the most. That may not seem like much, especially for bosses knocking that down to a mere plus 1, but for normal enemies, that's quite a difference. If reversals are too hard for you to perform, which a card in the upper right corner of the screen will direct you to a guide on what those are and how to perform them, then the extra damage can come in handy for whittling down sturdy enemies with relative ease. But that's where the positives end. The grounded single slash doesn't do squat for you, inside and out boss battles. 
Contrary to what the wiki says, it's actually no stronger than Base Form's final hit, because Base Form's final slash actually has the same damage increase property as Power Form's single slash. So, its only usefulness against bosses is that a Skull Crusher can deal 6 points of damage to a boss, effectively giving it some X skill tier damage. Other than that, it suffers from the same weaknesses other forms have in boss battles. All the plus 1 damage to other weapons don't even register as increased damage anyway. Here we go. Rise Form, which is not only the easiest form to acquire, but also the best form for a fresh new game file. It's mostly base form, but better. The third slash in triple slash is replaced with a rising slash that deals slightly more damage. If you're looking for maximum combo damage potential, then Rise Form is the form for you. Honestly, there's no real weaknesses for this form. It and base form will be your safest choices in the game, and its usefulness is quite self-explanatory. Even though, at the heart of the matter, it's merely just a slight damage boost for bosses that no other form other than ultimate can compete with. However, let me clear up a tiny misconception about the Rise Slash. I've seen a lot of claims, especially on the wiki, that the Rise Slash's slightly faster animation makes it less punchable, but that's actually not the case. In fact, there is actually a forced delay in the Rise Slash that causes it to nearly equal out the total amount of frames a full triple slash combo takes from base form. Let's do a frame count for just the third slashes themselves first. Rise Form's third slash comes out at a pretty quick 23 frames. Meanwhile, regular slash is at a large 35 frames. Technically, yes, Rise Form's third slash is faster. However, take notice of the delay Rise Form has undergone before that third slash can come out. What you're seeing here is that Rise Form's third slash cannot execute until the second slash's animation has been fully played out. Base Form doesn't have this problem, however. It can seamlessly link into the third slash before the second slash's animation is complete, effectively eliminating any delays. This slight 10 or so frame delay evens them out, hence Rise Form does not have any beneficial advantage to reducing triple slash's vulnerabilities. Does this make Base Form better? No. Rise Slash still does more damage, and that's what truly matters. Plus, it's cooler to look at, man. <sighs> you don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. But I legally can't. I kinda have to explain this one, don't I? Uh -huh. Well, let me give you one positive trait that it has. If you use it in normal mode, you're not locked out of X skills. That's... it. That's it! Yeah, sure. It gives you better power bonuses than power form, essentially making it a better power form offensively. But what's the point of that when you can't even charge anything but the boomerang? How about that charge chain rod into the stab X skill follow-up? Nope! It shares active form's first slash restriction, so that speaks for itself. And want to make matters worse, it sustains double damage. This form was made specifically for hard mode, but the fact that you can use it in normal mode just feels like an insult. I can rant on and on about how bad it is, but I'm pretty sure you've already framed it well enough. This is the worst form in the game, and that was clearly on purpose. If you're a beginner, just, just stay away from this form for now. At most, this is used for self-imposed challenges on normal mode. In hard mode, you've got no choice because you're stuck with it. Now, here's a tricky one. If you want to get technical, you can consider this the game's best form, but it's ultimate form, of course it'd be. Charging is practically a waste of time when you can just input commands to execute them instantly. Not to mention its second slash has a plus two damage boost, effectively making its triple slash combos total damage equal to rise forms. On screen are the button combinations required to execute the insta charge attacks. There's a bit of leeway with these as you can preemptively input commands while you're performing another action. Basically, you're buffering the attack, so it can execute as soon as Zero's animations are in a ready position. Now for the downsides. Obviously, this is a New Game Plus exclusive form, so you're not going to be using it in fresh files. Second, the input commands can seriously get in your way. Like, really get in your way. With no way to turn them off, you'll make so many unintentional charge attacks when you're trying to do certain X skills or even advanced tech like reversals and skull crush. 
That's why I still consider Rise Form the better armor for practical use because you don't have to deal with accommodating for extra inputs. You can be as lax on the D-pad as you like with that form, and there's no real benefit to using Ultimate if you're not going to master the input commands. However, if you're willing to work around these annoyances, because you can with practice, it's undoubtedly more brain dead if you want to YOLO everything with insta chart slashes and stuff like that, it's crazy. And that's where we get to the root of things. Zero 02's implementation of forms was a neat concept, but it was executed in a very, very flawed manner. It's quite a shame how just a select few forms add on to the combat. The majority of them only provide minor gimmicks and stat boosts that won't really affect the combat by much. Hell, while Rise Form is the best form, you could still perfectly play the game just fine without it, because base form is just that good. But that's what that seed metaphor was getting at at the beginning of this video. Zero Two planted a seed, and you know what that seed sprouted into? Zero Three. Zero Three's combat system wouldn't have been as good if they didn't experiment with forms, X skills, and a very basic version of the hit priority system and Zero Two. That's why I can't be too hard on what Zero Two attempted here, because there's still some enjoyment in their little experiment here, and it really paved the way for Inti Creates' titles after it. My main purpose of creating this guy was to clear up a lot of misconceptions of forms, give Rockman Perfect Memories their due credit for being the only accurate resource on the net for forms, and provide additional insight to them, all for educational purposes. I hope you enjoyed and found this guide helpful.